I'm George Jorgerson. And I'm known as a baker. And I'm the caretaker of the Capital Union School in downtown Detroit. But I am a conductor on the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. There's not much known about me because the records of my life and activities was destroyed when the Capitol Union School burned down. But there's enough known about me for us to talk today. I joined and became a part of the Underground Railroad. And Underground Railroad means underground is secret. Railroad was a way to get from one place to another, and in this case, from slavery to freedom. So it wasn't really underground, and it wasn't really a railroad. I was a conductor, which means I took people from one place to another to get them from one hiding area to another, and to get them from a hiding area to freedom. The station master that I worked closely with was named Seymour Finney. Seymour Finney was a tailor. And he used his tailor, the money he made from being a tailor, to open up a little tavern, like a little bar. And he used the money from both of those ventures to open up an inn. Today you might call that a motel. But there was no motor in the 1850s. <laughs> so these were people in wagons and the horses. And they needed somewhere to store those wagons and horses. And so Seymour Finney built a barn. And this barn had two tons of hay hiding an area for black people who were escaping from slavery. Seymour Finney was a member and one of the leaders of the Detroit Anti-Slavery Society. And he was a station master which means he was in control of a hiding area. And it was my job to take people from one place to the other. But even though I'm a part of the Underground Railroad in Detroit, and you can learn about me from Seymour Finney's son, who wrote about me in his book. And Seymour Finney's son was named Jared Finney. He was one of the early United States prosecutors and there used to be a school in Detroit named after him, Finney High School. But even though I was part of the Underground Railroad, there were many other people who were part of the Underground Railroad in Detroit. And in 1807, you have one of the earliest stories of someone in Detroit being taken to Canada to get their freedom. And this is a story of children or the children of Peter and Hannah Dennison. They, they weren't our children, but they were the children of Peter and Hannah Dennison, who sued for the freedom of their children. And they were not successful in freeing all of their children. But they found another way to get them free. Somehow their children ended up in Canada and established their freedom there before returning back to Michigan and Detroit years later. And Peter and Hannah Dennison's most famous child is Elizabeth Lissette Dennison IV. And other people on the Underground Railroad come along later in the 1830s. In 1833, Thornton and Ruthie Blackburn escaped from Kentucky and come to Detroit. And as they're captured by two slave catchers and the sheriff and the deputy, a group, hundreds of people come out to help them get free. And after... And after their free, the Detroit Anti-Slavery Society is started. And the Second Baptist Church is started. And that there always has been that link between the church and freedom and education and justice. And it happened here in Detroit as well. Members of that church were all involved in education and civil rights and abolition, members like George the Baptiste, the minister William Monroe, Robert Bradby, all, William Webb, all of these great leaders of the Underground Railroad. Other leaders like William Lambert helped to start 
St. Matthew's church. And he was one of the people to help, like me, like George the Baptiste, like William Webb, like all of those great ones, to help lead over 30,000 people from slavery to freedom. So don't forget us when you talk about the history of Detroit. Don't forget us when you talk about how Michigan is a haven for freedom. Don't forget those leaders in the Underground Railroad in Detroit because we were the beginning of the fight for justice in Michigan. 